his neck. That's it. She was still sleepwalking along the giddy heights of a lost career. Plain crazy when it came to that one subject, her celluloid self, the great Norma Desmond. How could she breathe in that house so crowded with Norma Desmonds? More Norma Desmonds. And still more Norma Desmonds. It wasn't all work, of course. Two or three times a week, Max would haul up that enormous oil painting that had been presented to her by some Nevada Chamber of Commerce. And we'd see a movie, right in her living room. So much nicer than going out, she'd say. The plain fact was she was afraid of that world outside. Afraid it would remind her that time had passed. They were silent movies, and Max would run the projection machine, which was just as well. It kept him from giving us an accompaniment on that wheezing organ. She'd sit very close to me, and she'd smell of tube roses, which is not my favorite perfume, not by a long shot. Sometimes, as we watched, she'd clutch my arm or my hand, forgetting she was my employer, just becoming a fan, excited about that actress up there on the screen. I guess I don't have to tell you who the star was. They were always her pictures. That's all she wanted to see. Still wonderful, isn't it? 